Welcome to the African Leadership Series, where we bring you great inspirational speeches of African leaders. Africa is rich and not poor. As the great world that has been taken out of our continent over five centuries of the spoliation and extortion, very well put. Africa has immense actual and potential wealth. Gold, diamond, copper, manganese, bauxite, iron ore, uranium, asbestos, chrome, cobalt, a host of other minerals. <laughs> Our essential cultural produce have all been drained away by colonialist imperialism. Africa is far from being poor. It is Africans who are poor, not Africa. <laughs> and they are poor because of the uncounted profit that has been made out of the exploitation of their labor and their lands. If we are being baited to enter a European community, we must have something that community needs and needs badly when it pretends to offer a bonus by way of aid. When Greeks come bearing grapes, should we not look them well in the mouth? <laughs> if I may mix my metaphor. But I'm sure you get my meaning. <laughs> I raise this point so that it will stay in your minds when you may be tempted by the seductive promises of new colonialism to forget the real character of colonialist imperialism and be persuaded away from your own true interests and those of Africa. For today, we must each see ourselves as part of Africa in order that we may face colonialist imperialism and its new form, new colonialism, on a continent-wide front. For unity must be the keynote of our actions. Our enemies are many, and they stand ready to pounce upon and exploit our very weakness. They tell us that this particular person or that particular country has greater or more favorable potentialities than the other. They do not tell us that we should unite, that we are all as good as we are able to make ourselves once we are free. Remember, always, that you have four stages to make. First, the attainment of freedom and independence. Secondly, the consolidation of that freedom and independence. Thirdly, the creation of a unity and community between the free African states. Fourth, the economic and social reconstruction of Africa. This requires some plain speaking. And for the sake of Africa, let us speak plainly. As I see it, our greatest danger stems from disunity and the inability to see that the realization of our hopes and aspirations, the realization of our objective of total African independence, and of our future progress and prosperity is inextricably bound up with the necessity to unify our policy and actions in connection with the continuous struggle for independence and the greater tax of economic and social reconstruction beyond it. We must therefore face the issue of African unity now, for only unity will make the artificial boundaries and regional demarcations imposed by colonialism obsolete and superfluous. African unity will thus provide an effective remedy for border disputes and internecine troubles. In a united Africa, there could be no frontier claims between Ethiopia and Somalia, or between Zanzibar and Kenya, Guinea or Liberia, or between Ghana, Togoland and the Ivory Coast. Because
because you, we would regard ourselves as one great continental family of nations. If you like more African speeches like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. Remember to leave your suggestions on the topics you would like us to cover in the comments below.